Hey everyone, I'm here with some bonus draft content. The year of modern flashbacks has resumed and I'm back at home, so I'm not going to miss anymore, I don't think, for the rest of the year. So we're doing some triple Zendikar. Um, it's called by many the fastest format ever. So uh, yeah, you basically want to draft an aggro deck. It's hard to build control here. Landfall makes creatures ridiculous, things like that. Um, so I never actually drafted this format. I, I stopped playing Magic between... Lorwyn and Theros, basically, and didn't draft anything in between them. So uh, most of the rest of the ones this year will be things I haven't drafted, actually. So that'll be interesting. So uh, I'll see you guys when this fires. Hopefully we get a fetch land. We didn't get a fetch land, but we did get Warren Instigator, which I think is worth something. Maybe. Yeah, it's worth about a ticket and a half. So it's worth thinking about that. Let's see what else we have here. Um... Magma Rift is a pretty nice little removal spell. There's a, a cycle of cards that make you want to play monocolored, and this is one of those. Scythe Tiger, you know, is okay. I don't like it a whole lot. Um, Paralyzing Grasp is a little removal spell. Marsh Casualties. It, yeah, that could be pretty good. Um... Dusk, Blade Tusk Boar is just like a good aggressive creature. So the question is, do I want like the good removal? There's also Core Outfitter, uh, which there is equipment in this set that's pretty good. There's like, you basically just want to take a bunch of two drops, though, from what I understand about this format. And while Warren Instigator is one, I don't think it's the most aggressive one. So I think, I mean, we either want removal or a two drop, basically. Um, and I'm leaning towards taking Magma Rift. Yeah, let's do it. Um, okay. Journey to Nowhere is a great removal spell and probably what I'll take here. It's hard to say no to that. Red-White is a pretty good aggro deck here, I think. Amiria might be worth something, but I am uncertain. Let's check that real quick. Uh, not so much. Not even worth as much as the Instigator. So I think we just probably want the Journey. Um, Harrow is a nice little card for abusing Landfall. Uh, but yeah, we'll take the journey here. Okay, so Burst Lightning, another really good removal spell. Um, it's an interesting card. Making people sacrifice things. I'm not really sure how to evaluate it, actually. So, <laughs> like, it seems like it could be good. Like, because you control what gets sacrificed. Uh, Rune Flare Trap isn't going to be activated very often. Um, I think we probably just take Burst Lightning. We need some creatures eventually, because that's really how you win this format. But being able to kill all of our opponent's creatures is also pretty good. So we'll take Burst Lightning here. Okay, so... What do we have here? I don't think we want you. Nope, not especially. Uh, we could just take Core Cartographer. It's not the most exciting thing, though. Uh, Nimbus Wings is an okay aura. But this is probably the best card in this pack, and I'm going to take it. Um, I don't know if we'll play black. I mean, we could go black-red, theoretically. Um, but being able to gain Intimidate and being a two-drop dude is, is, is pretty good in this particular format. So, unfortunately, if you draft this in real life, like, the basic lands are even worth a lot of money, so it creates some weird draft situations, but... Uh, Online, they're not worth that much. So, as you can see, they're still around. Um, Core Sanctifiers isn't bad. There are some targets for it, at least in this format. Unstable Footing. Yeah, no thanks. Mm. That's not bad. I mean, it's a decent removal spell. I think the Grunts are a little too expensive. Um, we don't really have any great aggressive creatures in the pack. I think I'm just going to take another removal spell. And, uh, yeah, we definitely need to get some dudes. Dwar Isle Refuge doesn't really help our situation. Yeah, there's not really anything great left here. It might just be the Grunts. Um, you can go Multicolor Ally in this format, uh, so that's a thing, but... Yeah, no thanks. I guess I'll take the grunts. Ooh, Halo Hunter, huh? There are angels around, and it's not the worst creature, but it's in a format where you 
really want to value aggression and it is not aggressive but I think I'm still gonna take it um, yeah none of these are very exciting for me I guess I'll take this okay here's a core outfitter Probably just what I take here. Vampire's Bite. Yeah, no thanks. We'll just take the Outfitter. So maybe we're just going to go White-Red. We might be able to play the Halo Hunter. We might not be able to. I guess we take the Sanctifiers here. What does this one do? Nope, don't like that. Um, I'll take this. And that. And another one. So, I mean, Halo Hunter is a good creature, but it's not incredible. But we definitely need to get some good white two, one and two drops. Dudes with landfall especially are what we would like. Because right now our creatures aren't great. Our removal is pretty good. So this is basically a five mana three three. That's not an ally. That's not an ally. I mean, we need to pick up several allies for him to be worth it, I think. Our removal's pretty sweet, though. But other than that, it's not looking great. I mean, we might want to play this, depending on what our deck ends up like looking like. Yeah, like, the best card we're giving up is just this two-drop, basically. So, which would be nice. I mean, I guess we can stick him in here. He's not an ally, is he? No. Surikar. I don't think I realized that was an actual creature type until just now. Okay, Hellfire Mongrel. It's all right. Here's a nice aggressive creature. Of course, Skyfisher is pretty good aggressive creature. Two mana, two, three flyer. It does have a bit of a downside, but in a world where there's landfall, it's not really much of a downside. Arrow Volley Trap can be good, um, but it is a little clunky. So I think it's either the Boar or the Skyfisher. There's no like amazing removal here. Um, don't really want a Piranha Marsh. Uh, I think we just take the Skyfisher. We don't have any landfall yet, but, I mean, we're going to get some, right? If we keep our curve low enough, which I think probably means not including that guy, like, and I think that's the goal here, is you want, like, lots of twos and threes, basically, and a few fours. Ooh, Kazandu Blademaster. Now, this thing's pretty good, because at worst it's a two-mana, two-two with first strike and vigilance which in this format, even with lots of good two drops, is pretty dang good. It is double white, so we're going to need to be heavy white to really make that work, but I think he's still what we take here. Um, bold Defense is kind of cool. Crypt of Agadim I don't think is worth anything. Let's look. Yeah, no, not really. I think we just take the Blade Master. Um, it will also make any allies we get better, but he's just good on his own. Um, so we'll take him. We already have another double white anyway. We wouldn't mind some equipment since we have one card that's good with it. So here we go. Play to Geopede's really strong. Um, basically a two mana 3-3 three, three all the time. Punishing Fire is also pretty good. Although the life gain part is, you know, that's what makes it strong and constructed. is rarely relevant. It's just a two mana do two damage. But I think we need creatures more than we need um, removal right this second. Cliff Threader is a nice card that I wouldn't, you know, it's a two-mana dude, so you want to play it, basically. So, uh, um, also, Hardstabber Mosquito isn't terrible, but I guess it is a little clunky for this format. And in most formats, it would be a, a solid card, I think. So, we have a Hex Mage here, who's another good two-mana creature. But we're not sure we want to be playing black. Uh, here's another ally thing, but I don't think we have enough of them to care. It's not bad. It can kill a lot of the two drops in the format while giving you a dude. So I think that's probably... I'd probably just take Torch Slinger. Vampire Hex Mage is nice, like I said. Um, and I wouldn't mind Bloodseeker too much either. Or Gruel Draws Vampire. Those are all, like, reasonable cards. But I just don't see us playing black, most likely. So I think I just take the Torch Slinger here. Uh, yeah, we don't want Narrow Escape, we don't want Seismic Shutter, so yeah, we'll just take the Torch Slinger, who, in the late game, can kill stuff. 
Okay, so stuff is definitely drying up on us now. We have another really good black card. Kind of makes me think I should have been in black. Um, because we have like core sanctifiers, which I don't really want. Giant Scorpion's not terrible either. I mean, it's going to be easier to splash, I guess, but I guess I'll just take another Marauder here. I don't think I want a second Sanctifiers, especially. Maybe I'm wrong. Another Hex Mage, jeez. Okay, well, there's also another Burst Lightning. We're kind of turning into a weird control deck with all of our removal. Not sure how well that will actually fare. Adventuring Gear is a nice piece of equipment, but I can't, I think Burst Lightning's too good to say no to. Um... Hedron Scrabbler is pretty, pretty mediocre, but, you know, our deck is kind of desperate for two drops. I mean, we have a lot of them, but these two probably aren't getting played. Um, so I might just play it. Don't really want anything else, so yeah, I think I will. Okay, here's another Core Outfitter. It's just a two drop, basically, but we'll take it. Um, wouldn't mind seeing an Adventurer's Gear. It would definitely make him, make our two Core Outfitters a little better. But we're definitely like a heavy white deck. We have three cards that cost two white. Um, Trailblazer's Boots isn't really the kind of equipment I'm looking for. No reason we should want to play that. Um, do I just take the rare? I think that's what I'm going to do here. Yeah. We're just going to take the rare. Okay, so we have Bold Defense... We also have Crypt of Agadim, but I don't see this deck. Oh, not white, black anyway. Yeah, we'll take Bold Defense. Here's Equipment, but I don't love it. Uh, Mold Shambler is a fun card in Commander that I like, but I don't know how good it is here. I'll take the the Nest, the Net, rather. Um, I doubt we play it, but if we end up with some more Equipment Synergy, maybe we do. So have we picked up any more allies? I don't know that we have. No. No, we have not. Uh, this thing is pretty good if you're the black deck, I think. Um, oh, no, it's not. I was thinking that was the one mana 2-2 two, two who hurts you, unless otherwise it's not that good. It's the one mana 1-1 one, one who gets bigger when your opponent's life is low. Yeah, black is pretty open, though. I mean, like, we picked up some playable black cards there. We actually have enough black stuff that it, it might be worth looking at trying to play some of it, but... Um, that's true. You know, the way the allies work in this isn't the same as they work in Zendikar, Battle for Zendikar, where it does stuff for all your creatures. It only helps allies, and we just don't have enough of them to even want to want to look at that card. This could help us splash some black stuff. Um, this is the life gain one. Ugh. Goblin Rune Blaster is okay. So is Shatter Skull Giant, like as a curve topper. It's probably just what I take here. Don't really want Bold Defense. Or the Evangel. I guess the Evangel has a little bit of upside. You know, it's a three mana two three at least, but I'm not a huge I'm not don't have enough allies to really take advantage. I think I just take the uh four mana four three here. Um Yeah, this pack in general is not that exciting, but I'll take I'll take a curve topper here. Another I could have gotten back to back rare allies, which probably would have been pretty good, probably. Well now we have burst lightning versus adventuring gear. Again, and a Punishing Fire. I think we probably take Adventuring Gear now. There's also a Bushwhacker. This pack is just really good. But, I mean, we have so much removal, and I think we want an, a powerful equipment like Adventuring Gear to be in our deck. Um, ooh, Core Aeronaut. That's really good. Um, so is the Skyfisher again. We do have some Landfall now. The question is, which is better? The Skyfisher is easier to cast, and we're, like, really st straining our mana a little bit here. Uh, we're just basically, we're going to have to have a lot of white and very little red, which maybe means that Shadow Giant wasn't a great choice. There's also a plated Geopede, which might just be better than both of them. Um, yeah, I think it probably is. It's just so hard to block and stuff. Yeah, I think I'll take him. The Aeronaut I like and the Skyfisher I like, but I think it's going to be a little easier on my mana to just take another Geopede here. Okay, short cutter's good for us. It makes a creature unable to block, so we like that. Um, yep, we'll take that. Another outfitter, not the most exciting thing. Can gain two life with that land. 
also not the most exciting thing. We just take a teetering peaks, which isn't a bad little utility lane to have. And we can take a sideboard card that I probably won't ever sight in. I don't think we want another outfitter. I think, you know, two is probably plenty unless we end up with like some crazy equipment, but I don't think that's going to happen at this point. Um, hmm. Do I just want another outfitter? Maybe I do in this just like aggro format. But Teetering Peaks plays into that too, so I'll go ahead and take it. Lava Ball Trap. Um, you know, that'll occasionally get set off in a format like this one. Now we'll take another one of these, I guess. Uh, we don't want Pillar Field Ox, especially. No. Yeah, we'll take this. Another Torch Slinger Inferno Trap. Yeah, that's not bad. I'll take another removal spell. We are definitely low on creatures for this format, but I think we have enough removal and enough like high quality creatures that we can just sort of get around that um, with all of our removal and our, our dudes and stuff. Another adventuring gear is pretty great, actually. Highland Berserker isn't bad either. Um, but I think we just want another adventuring gear at this point. Molten Ravager, huh? I can take this. Maybe we decide to splash something. I kind of doubt it, but Ooh, Punishing Fire coming to me isn't bad. But we have so much removal, I think I just want a two mana, two one. Um, and this isn't a terrible thing to look at, given that we have two pieces of equipment, but I think you probably need more. So I'm just going to take uh, another two drop here. So this is probably our deck. Uh, I think we want to run 18 lands. We have enough landfall to want to do that, I think. I um, don't really want either of you. But at least you're in my colors. Well, we can splash easily if we want, I guess. Uh, but I don't know that we... We could potentially cut our outfitters and run, like, some smaller, lower curve creatures in black. But I think our deck's fine. I mean, 13 creatures is probably not where you want to be in this format. So we'll just have to see if our... Hi, uh, for a good removal, you know, I kind of dra I dra came into this draft knowing I wanted to take a lot of creatures and two drops and stuff, uh, but my mind is used to more traditional limited formats where, like, this removal is really good, and I think it probably is, but there's a chance it's not as good as I was hoping. Um, so we'll just have to see. We did not end up with, like, any other allies, I don't think, but that's probably okay. Kind of crazy, though. Scout. Oh, we probably don't want Goblin War Paint. So, we have room for one more card. Question is, what is it? Hmm. I don't think it's Spider Silk Net. Yeah, we didn't get a lot of great. Like, maybe we just do want Goblin War Paint in this deck, because we just don't have a lot of other great options. I don't love War Paint. Um, and I also really don't love Unstable Footing, so <laughs> I think War Paint's better than that, and then we play our one Teetering Peaks as well. Um, and then we run 17 other lands. That is interesting. Um... that it wants me to run more mountains. I think that's just, like, categorically wrong, Magic Online. <laughs> I do have two Shatter Skull Giants, but, like, I have three two-drops that cost double white that I think it's more important that I be able to play. Um, so I think it's actually more like 10, 7. I think we want at least... Yeah. And that gives us eight red sources still. I think that's reasonable. Um... All right. Well, that looks like a curve for this format, I think. Um, and this will be our deck. So hopefully we do pretty well with it. It'll be sort of an interesting lesson here to see if uh, you can you can do well with a 13-creature deck in this format, even when you have really good removal. So we'll see. Um, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment. And if you want to make sure you catch more draft videos, including Eldritch Moon and uh, the other Year of Modern Flashback draft videos, don't forget to click the subscribe button.